Hey everyone, so this is Greg Taylor from Trinity Web Media, and this is my presentation for WordCamp New York City on September 16th, 2018. So I wanted to take a moment and uh, introduce Stop Selling, Start Solving Problems. That's going to be the topic of the talk. And so the premise is how often do we talk about what we do and not so much about what the client needs and how we can help them. I think everything goes back to being helpful and everything goes back to solving problems. Once you can figure out how to solve somebody's problem, the selling process becomes very, very easy. And, because, and in fact, it's not even selling. So I just want to thank everybody from WordCamp New York City, all the organizers, all the volunteers. Thank you for all the attendees. You know, WordCamp is a great WordPress Community WordCamp is you know is an extension of the WordPress community, but WordCamp is a great conferences put on regionally by all by volunteers. So thank you everybody and thank everybody who is listening to this. Thank you everyone who's attending it in person. Thank you everybody for your support over the years. So if you ever have a question when I'm presenting, especially when I'm presenting live, just raise your hand. Let's talk about it. I don't want to go ahead and I don't want to do you know, speak at a bunch of people. I want to speak with a bunch of people and have discussions. So if you are watching this on YouTube or on our site and you have a question, just ping me on Twitter at grtaylor2 or send me an email at taylor at Trinity Web Media and I'd be more than happy to talk about it and discuss it with you. So who am I? Greg Taylor, co-founder of Trinity Web Media. I fell into WordPress development kind of backwards. Uh, I went to school for marketing and I worked in a bunch of ad agencies and what happened was I found myself to be highly unemployable in the agency world because I had a will to affect change and do things differently and that didn't always fit in with the revenue model of the agency I was working for. So as you can imagine, I got shown the door a number of times. And what happened from that, I just realized that I wanted to do things differently. I had a will to do things differently. And I started a content marketing firm when content marketing was brand new and nobody really knew what it was. And what we were doing is we were creating this great, these great content strategies, which included video and audio and, and photo and all aspects of content. But we we're putting them on really lousy websites. So I decided to take the bull by the horns and start developing websites. This is in 2007. So... I fell into WordPress development and I loved it. I loved the community. I spoke at my first WordCamp. There are about WordCamp Los Angeles and I've been a part of the community ever since. So that is my story. That's how I came to be here to talk to you. And this doesn't mean that I am the authority. I am, you know, the expert. I am the this, the that, you know, on these topics. It just means that I'm just further down the continuum than you are at the moment. You know, I hope to attend WordCamp New York City next year and see one of you guys speak. You know, I just got an email last night that somebody that I gave a ticket to uh, WordCamp Phoenix five years ago, she's speaking at her first WordCamp in Philadelphia, and she sent me a thank you email last night. So that was pretty cool. So I was happy for Nikki. So who's this talk for? This talk's for anybody who is in front of clients. It's talk for anybody who owns a business, anybody who runs a business, any freelancer. It's for anybody who wants to do things differently and kind of change their mindset and change their paradigm about how they look at the selling process, how they look at the client experience, and how to get results for your brand. So who are you? Basically, you know, in the audience, the audience is mixed up of a number of different people. We have marketers, we have developers, we have writers. We have artists, we have content creators, we have business owners. So the mix, there's always a big mix there. You know, uh, by raise of hands, I'm going to ask, how many people are freaked out by Gutenberg? How many people love the fact that Gutenberg's coming and know all about it? How many people hate e-commerce sites, building e-commerce sites? How many people love building e-commerce sites? I'm sure that there's a mix of a little bit of everybody out there. But we're all creatives. What happened is we are all creative individuals. That's what's drawn us to WordPress. That's what's drawn us to this WordCamp community. That's what's 
drawn us to do things on our own. We all have a will to do things in a creative fashion, whether it's writing code, writing code, and sometimes maybe some of the, the wrote, most rote things in the world to do, but at the same time, there is a level of creativity that goes into doing that. So we are all creatives. If you don't believe that we are all creatives, there's a disconnect. Because what happens, you know, my definition of a creative is somebody who has the ability to think abstractly versus linear. So if you're an accountant, there's only one way to do proper accounting or ethical accounting, I should say, right? So it's their steps are A, B, C, and D. When you're thinking abstract, you need to get from A to D, but you may jump around and you may wander into some uncharted territory in order to get there. So that's sort of the abstract thinking when I start talking about creatives. No, I understand that we're not all graphic designers, we're not artists, we're not creatives by the traditional sense, but we are creative thinkers. So what brings us all together? The two things, the commonality that bring us all together is our love for WordPress, WordCamp, and the community, and that we are creative people. So that's something really important for us to know and recognize. So why is the concept important? The concept is important because the commonality brings us together. Commonality of our mindset is going to bring us together. And then thinking about being able to think about things differently is going to help you kind of take these principles and put them into play in your business. There's more noise than ever in our space. There's more distractions ever. You know, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk always talks about he's a day trader of attention. And that's really, really true. You have, it used to be you have five seconds to get somebody's attention. Now I want to say that you have maybe a half a second to get somebody's attention, whether it's on social media or your blog post or your title or who you are in person, you know, the real life. So there is more noise than ever. And why is there more noise than ever? Because the snake oil salesman and there's murky water of what we do. From now on, what, what happens is anybody can proclaim that they are an expert at anything. And they don't have to have any type of you know, traditional training, any type of traditional education, any type of on-the-job training or anything like that. There's a lot of people out there who say that they are expert at things when, in fact, they're just picking things up. So I, I you, you know, there's, there's a, always the fake it to make it type of type of mindset. I never believe in that because if you're faking it, you're faking it and you're being fake and that doesn't help anybody. So just this is why things are important here. People are skeptical of what they do not understand. And sometimes the only thing that they understand is the problem that they're experiencing, the problem that they're having at the moment. They don't understand how a website is going to help them. They don't understand how a good content strategy is going to help them. They don't understand how, you know, a strong social presence or SEO pres efforts, you know, is going to benefit them. They only understand what the pain that they are experiencing at the moment. You know, nobody likes to be bought. Nobody likes to be sold to, but everybody likes to buy. You know, the common buying cycle that we experience when it comes to business, and I got this from John Jance of Duct Tape Marketing, is you solve a problem, they get to know you, they get to like you, they get to trust you, they'll try your company, they'll hire your company, hopefully they'll repeat, and then after repeating, they'll refer you to other people. So the way that I always shorten that is demonstrate you can solve a problem and then there's the no like trust try by repeat refer cycle that's super important going forward because again no one likes to be sold but people like to buy there's no barrier to entry we already said that to starting a business i think that you know when i formed my first company i think that it was 175 dollars to file my corporate papers i don't know what it is in new york city or other parts of the com country but I know that mine was $175 and WordPress is open source. So for that, you can just, you know, for that low barrier to entry, you can go ahead and you can start opening shop. And what you're doing is you're competing against everybody's brother, everybody's sister, everybody's cousin who knows a little bit about WordPress. But they know about WordPress, but they don't know about how to solve business problems. 
So if you've ever he- heard me speak before or listened to our podcast or read anything about me, I'm big on the goals of websites and understanding the goals of websites. And here you can you can interchange website with marketing or you, digital marketing efforts or social media. There are only three goals that you are out to achieve. You're publishing content and building websites for your content and for your branding. So what you want to be, what do you want to do is you want your brand to become more prominent and be known as subject matter experts in certain verticals and also to have your content help you rise through the ranks to achieve that. You're trying to build a community around your product, service, and brand. And you see that a lot with nonprofits, you know, a lot of animal charities, very, very good at that. You know, a lot of faith-based organizations, very, very good at building community. Then the last one is conversion. And the way that I define conversion is conversion is getting anybody, getting your user to act in a particular manner that you intended them to use. So it could be signing up for a newsletter. It could be buying something. It could also be, you know, different clicks for call to actions and what whatnot. So the one thing that I always ask here is, what did I leave out? Did I leave any goals out? And it's sort of a trap question because inevitably somebody always raises their hand and says, my goal of my website or my goal of my marketing is to make money and to generate revenue. My answer to that is generating revenue is not a goal. Generating revenue is a byproduct of one of these three goals. So generating revenue, yes, that's what we're all doing. But if you have, if you're positioned as a subject matter expert, if you have a strong community and you have conversion in your marketing and throughout your website, you're going to generate revenue. So some of the common business problems that we address are, you know, common across the board in almost every industry. People feel like their brand is invisible. Lack of revenue is a business problem. It's not a, you know, it it definitely is a business problem. Brand perception, lack of loyalty, inferior, you name it, inferior operations is a common business problem. Inferior operation is something that good marketing and good sales cannot conquer. And also inexperience, it was more on the operation side. So out of these five, or out of, out of these six, what good marketing and a good website can do is help increase the visibility of a brand, help generate revenue by meeting the goals, and increase the brand perception, and increase some loyalty through community. If your business sucks, your business is going to suck, and clever marketing or good marketing is never going to help that and never going to make that better. If your business is inexperienced, there's no way that, you know, good marketing is going to increase that. So just know that going into everything. So here's quick, just reality check. Hopefully everything that I said makes sense up to this point. If it doesn't make sense, now is the time to hit pause or to raise your hand and to send me a tweet, send me an email. Let's discuss it before we go any further because I do not want to lose you at all. So these are things that are not a problem. The biggest thing in the world that's not a problem is the problem is never that people do not have what you're selling. And I learned that from a good friend of mine, Susan Byer of Audience Audit, who does audience segmentation data analysis. I think that she's probably the only person in the world that I've ever met who actually does that. So the problem is never that people do not have what you're selling. A business problem when you meet somebody down the street or some small business and they say, well, we don't have a a website. That's not a business problem because their business is probably running fine without one. The problem is, is lack of visibility. The problem is that they can't be found. The problem is, you know, that they're not generating sales online. So those are the business problems to address. The website is the tool to which we address that. Also not problems that you are broke as a vendor and as a company, that your business is in a growth stage or, you know, lacking growth or, you know, or experiencing different troubles. You know, there are a number of other business problems that we all experience as business owners. And I know, and believe me, I know you not being able to make payroll, wondering how the hell you're going to make payroll is not a problem for your customers to solve. That's a problem for you to solve on your own, but it's not a problem for your customers to help you solve. If you keep selling without solving these problems, you're always going to have these problems. So here's some interesting things. If we can start to crack the code on all of this good stuff. The brand game. 
So here's a couple of examples of shifting paradigm. You know, so Red Bull. What's Red Bull? Everybody always tells me Red Bull is an energy drink company, et cetera, et cetera. Red Bull is not an energy drink company. Red Bull is a media company that happens to sell an energy drink. The problem that they have, that they've solved, is they get their brand out in front of everybody through rich media. If you look at any skateboard contest or uh, any kind of action sports, any type of, really, a, a, you know, any sporting event, Red Bull is on the forefront of that. And Red Bull is on the forefront of that creating media and creating content. GoPro. GoPro is not a camera company. GoPro is a content creation company. That's the problem that they solve. They've helped people create content. You know, Nick Woodman, the CEO and founder, actually says that sometimes they're a content enabling company. That until recently, you know, if you've ever had a GoPro, worked with a GoPro, you know how hard it is actually to get your footage off of a GoPro. So GoPro is a content creation company. One of my favorites, Lululemon. Lululemon is a clothing company, but it's not a fashion brand. It's a lifestyle. Lululemon knows who their their audience is. They know who they're talking to. They know who their their target market is, and they market to them as a lifestyle, not as fashion. So now think about your organization. What do you guys do? Where how are you positioned? And where are you positioned? What do you know? Hopefully now you're not thinking of yourselves as a WordPress development company or a social media marketing company or a content management company. Hopefully now you're starting to see yourself as a problem-solving organization as we are at Trinity. What are you? You're creative problem solvers. We're going back to the word creative. You're going to solve business problems through your creativity and through your specific skill set. So for a long time, you know, Trinity Web Media, what we tried to do is, you know, we tried to help people publish content. We tried to help people build better websites. We tried to help build brands. But until we really embraced the fact that we are creative problem solvers, the business was just stagnant. By embracing this 18 months ago, close to two years ago, we've seen the business grow. And what we end up doing is we become the source for people to keep coming to when they have business problems. And a lot of the conversations start out with, I may be crazy for talking to you about this, but how can you help me with XYZ business problem that we're experiencing? This is a huge, huge breakthrough. Now you're a trusted advisor. Also, my co-founder and I, me, uh, my co-founder and I, Kev, Kevin Everly, we have a podcast called The New Marketing Show, which you get on iTunes, uh, simply at trinitywebmedia.com slash iTunes, where we discuss all these things. And we talk about how effective web development and effective digital marketing solves business problems. So you got to remember the goals of the website. The goals of the website is publishing content to raise visibility. Publishing content to increase your brand's perception of being a subject matter expert. Building community around your product, service, and brand, and conversion. Now, when you go and you, you match things up, the, remember common business problems. The brand is invisible, lack of revenue, brand perception, lack of loyalty, inferior operations, and inexperienced staff. Now you're able to take these six problems and see how these three web marketing you know, development goals match and help solve problems. You know, if your brand is invisible, sure, publishing a lot of content and getting known out there is going to definitely help you. If you have lack of revenue, conversion is probably for you. If your brand perception is, is not exactly where you want it to be, building a strong community around your product, service, and brand will also help. Lack of loyalty, all three of those things, you know, especially community. Inferior operations, inexperienced staff, those are things that we cannot help with, unfortunately. Wish that we could. So remember the buying cycle. Solve problems, know, like, trust, try, buy, repeat, refer. When you solve problems, you start to win. And when you start to win, everybody wins. So remember way back when when I was talking about people who were freaked out about Gutenberg coming into WordPress and people who embraced Gutenberg, 
right there is a and 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 also when we talk about who people in the audience, people listening who hate developing e-commerce sites, and people who love creating e-commerce sites, this is a perfect example right here in this room, right in this audience of everybody listening, watching, all of that about somebody having a problem and a way to solve that problem. If you embrace Gutenberg and you love building e-commerce sites. I guarantee there's people out there that you can work with who are either freaked out by Gutenberg, they don't know anything about the new WordPress 5.0 system, or they also hate building e-commerce sites. So that's going to be one of the things that you can go ahead and match, match everything up so that you can start to solve problems and help people win. So I have three last points, and then I always open it up for Q&A. First point is go do. Nothing happens without you doing something. Nothing happens without you being here. Nothing happens without you going ahead and making, trying to make something happen for yourself, or for your business, and for others. The second one is perfection is the enemy of progress. Don't be afraid to try something and fail. Don't wait until perfect to get something to give something to the world. If you wait for perfect, it's never ever going to happen. Perfection is definitely the enemy of progress. And the third thing is help somebody else. If you see somebody within the WordPress community or marketing community that's struggling, offer to lend a helping hand. Offer to do a, a presentation. Offer to do something at WordCamp. You know, help somebody out. That's what the whole WordPress community has been built on. So it's time for, you know, it was always time for me to give back. So I'm up here speaking and recording this. Also, you know, when your time comes, you know, it's your time. It's it's up to you to recognize that and to help somebody else. So thank you for listening. Thank you for checking this out. Hope that you enjoyed uh, my WordCamp New York City 2018 talk. And if you attend in person, thank you even even more. I really appreciate everything that you guys have done for us. And we look forward to talking to you later. Thanks.